Welcome to the Iron Self Podcast, where we jump into health, fitness, mindset, and becoming the best version of yourself. Today with your hosts, Mike and Kayla Minion. Hello and welcome back to the Iron Self Podcast again today with Kayla and Mike. Today we are here to talk about love yourself. Self-talk self-compassion, and why are these things so, so important? So let's just dive right in, okay? <laughs> <laughs> how, how many people do you guys know that go through their life, and when you talk to them, especially if they're good friends, family, things like that, and they, they never really have the nicest things to say about themselves? It's always that inner critic. that It's always that negative connotation, the negative voice going on through their head. Well, how would we ever get to love anybody else properly if we don't start with loving ourselves. That that's the start of the basis that I wanted to start with today. So we're gonna start with that. Well let's just start here and just think of one thing, maybe two things that you often say to yourself throughout the day. What is the messaging that you're telling yourself? So if you can't think of anything off the top of your head, imagine yourself standing in front of a mirror, what the hell would you say to yourself? What goes through your brain? What is the messaging that you're hearing? So Think of those thoughts, and now I want you to imagine you had to say them to your child, to your parent, to your partner, to your loved one. How do you think they would receive it? I think they'd be confused because they'd say, oh my God, where did all your hair go? Mike, where, why are your hips so fat? <laughs> that's you know? not nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, that's not okay to say to other people, but somehow, somehow, we accept that as normal and okay to say to ourselves. Totally acceptable to beat ourselves up. Okay, so if I just critique myself enough, Mike, one day, one day, I'm going to love myself because I'll be so perfect. Mm, doesn't sound like that's going to work. You don't think that's going to work? But wait, if I just break myself over and over and over again, you don't think that one day I'll just become perfect? Probably not. There, there are the odd people that deal well with criticism. They, they actually kind of, it fuels them. You hear about some of these, I, I heard about a football player recently in a podcast where he was told he was number two and he, he told his team to keep telling him that he wasn't the number one guy on their team and he kept working that much harder. And the guy went all state, he was in the NFL, like amazing football player, but it was all because he, he was one of those rare crazy people that could actually draw from that and be like, oh, that fuels me. I'm going to be better. But most people, if you berate them over and over and over and over again, they give up. They give up. They stop. They stop doing. They, they stop, stop trying. Caring. So I'm going to take this back a notch here. Let's go back. Let's pretend you are my child. Hello. Hi. Hi, little Mikey. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's pretend you're my child. Okay, so if you're my child and I said to you, Mike, you super suck at hockey. Like, I mean, like, you can barely skate. You can barely stand. I mean, good luck if you're going to get a goal. I haven't yet seen you touch that puck. I mean, but, you know, keep trying, little buddy. Do you think that Mike's going to, like, love hockey and look forward to going to hockey practice? It's my childhood all over again. <laughs> 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 okay, but when children experience criticism regularly, they form negative belief systems about themselves. They gain low self-esteem. They gain feelings of hopelessness and a dependency on external validation. Did I totally just psychoanalyze your childhood? No. It was mine. It was my childhood. <laughs> I'm like, where is that external validation? Somebody just validate me. But it's so true. We, From a young age, we start to develop our inner beliefs about ourselves, whether they're positive or negative. So as parents, it's our job to be able to reinforce the great things our kids are doing. If we are in a constant state of, hey, you didn't do this good enough, then they're going to have a thought growing up through their entire lives. And this, again, is what Kayla's talking about with the psychoanalytics here is that maybe you have that belief that, you know, you're, you're always trying, but you're never quite good enough. And maybe that is a deep-rooted child childhood thought, right? So this is something that, that's pretty important. And this is something that's really, we, we learn this. This is something that we can also unlearn. So I'm going to give you an idea of, like, an actual story. So there is a story about an elephant. Have you heard this story? I don't think you have. Anyway... <laughs> Totally heard it. <laughs> so if you haven't heard the elephant story, it goes like this. Essentially, 
it, from an elephant at a, uh, as, a, as an infant elephant, if you tie a rope around that elephant's neck and you tie it to a tree, and it will struggle the first couple times and try and get away from that tree. Eventually, this elephant learns that he cannot get away from the tree, so he gives up and he stands there and he waits until he's untied from the tree. If that elephant grows and he gets bigger and bigger and bigger and he comes, becomes a great big elephant, this great big elephant now has that belief that he cannot get away from the tree. But if you look at that elephant or I look at that elephant and we're like, well, that elephant could break the rope. He could take down that tree. I mean, he definitely has enough power and strength to get away from this tree and this rope, but he doesn't try. Why? Because at a young age, he learned to give up. Learned helplessness. He learned that helplessness. And so this just goes to show is like what the messaging that we give our children is so critical to their long-term self-belief and their long-term, I'm going to say resiliency, yeah. right? I mean, we can gain more resiliency over time, but this is something to go back to is like, if you ever have yourself with that belief of, I am not enough, I am not good enough, I am not this enough, whatever, go back and take a look at where that might, that belief may have started from. And I want you to begin to question whether or not this belief is valid and true. Like, does it hold merit still today? At one point, this belief system kept us alive. It kept us, you know, moving forward in our lives. It, it served its purpose. Yeah. But does it still serve a purpose? Is it huge. Well, there's, there's so many people, and, and this is, again, a generalization, but there's so many people that have these, these self-beliefs that are, I'm just going to use the word, complete bullshit. You tell yourself a story every morning when you wake up about how you might not be good enough at something or how you you could do better every day and you and you're again you're in that constant state of berating yourself you're, you're constantly talking down to yourself and it's simply not okay when you start to look at everything that you've done in your life you are a pretty amazing person i don't you know I'm, I'm talking on a general basis here but most people have done some pretty amazing things and it doesn't even have to be anything big but if you you know you show up every day for your job you you show up every day for your family, for your loved ones, for your kids, for yourself, for yourself, right? This, these, these are these are accomplishments in their own. So maybe instead of just beating the ever living hell out of yourself every day, maybe you start taking a look at all the awesome things you do, and maybe just just pick one, pick one per day, and say, hey, you're doing an awesome job because of. Blah. And I think that 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 is so important to note, you know. What is it that I am already doing? Build on that success. We don't want you going around and telling yourself a lie. Like if you look in the mirror and you just lie to yourself about what you see or whatever, we don't want that taking Full place. head of luscious hair today. <laughs> we, don't want, we don't want that being the messaging that you're giving yourself because you're going to feel like you're lying and it's just not going to sit well. But I want you to start to question the messaging that you're giving yourself and maybe start replacing it with other things. I mean, in, okay, so in yoga, we have an ancient scripture called the Bhagavad Gita. I can never say that. Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita. Anyways, it's like a tongue twister. But in the ancient scripture, it says our self-liberation lies in our own self-acceptance. And it, so, like, I think that this takes us back that, you know, in order to accept yourself, you need to fully begin to become aware of yourself to become aware of your surroundings, to become aware of the messaging that you're giving yourself. And that's where you're going to begin to truly accept and love and cherish this person. For anybody who listened to our episode with Sean Meyer recently, he, he spoke to this in the sense that, you know, you, you can tell a lie to anybody else in the world, but when you start, you, you can acknowledge every lie you've ever told yourself. And that, that is that self-acceptance. If you have told yourself that you're not good enough at something when you know that you technically are, that you're lying to yourself, right? So you're doing a disservice in that in its beginning. Yeah, and I would say, you know, take the opportunity to start to write down these messaging that you're giving yourself and start to question them. Like, hey, I always say this to myself. Is this actually true? And start to look at that objectively. Oh, actually, that isn't true. You know, I, I actually do this and this and this and this and this. These all support the fact that I actually am not what I tell myself I am here. I am all these other things. And when it comes to self-acceptance, it doesn't mean that you agree with all of the beliefs and behaviors that you've held over time. And I think that a lot of people, 
really determine themselves based on what their past circumstances were, uh, decisions that they made in their past, choices that they made, belief systems that they held, and not understanding that you do not need to be those things, and you just accept that, accept what was, and you accept it all. And then you accept it without fear and without judgment, right? Acceptance doesn't require you to judge yourself, and it doesn't require you to judge others. Yeah, you can't spend your, your entire life judging yourself because um, full disclosure for anybody who hasn't known me for over 15 or 20 years, I was a terrible kid. I, I did a lot of things that I'm not very proud of um, growing up. And and this is the thing, that, that's growing up. It took me a long time to be able to forgive myself for the, for the crap that I did growing up. And I mean, it's still, I'm telling you straight up, it's it's a lifelong journey. It's, it's something where you, you know, you, you always question it again. You're like, oh man, am I falling back into old habits? And then you look at your current circumstances again, being mindful of what you're doing. And you're like, nope, that's just that, that nagging thought in my head of, oh man, I, I don't want to go back to where I was. And that's okay. You can, you can be mindful of a situation and, you know, say, I don't want to be back to where I was, but again, being mindful that you're, you're not actually there. You're actually taking these steps of improvement because if you constantly identify as what you were, you'll never get to become what you want to be. And that is that acknowledgement, that acceptance, accept it for what it was, and take those action steps. Action being the key word. If you were listening to what Mike was saying here, action steps into becoming this new version of yourself, into becoming this better, more uplifting version of yourself. Now, one key here that we can start to bring into our awareness or use as a tool is something called self-compassion. And I like to say self-compassion is the cake and it has three ingredients. So Mike, what are the three ingredients of self-compassion? So ingredient number one <laughs> um, is kindness. So kindness, how, how would you define kindness? Okay, so the dictionary defines kindness as the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. That's pretty nice. Friendly, right. generous, considerate. I'm all those things to other people, but sometimes I'm not those things to myself. See, and this, this is coming from what I'm going to call an expert in the field, right? So being able to acknowledge that we're not always the best to ourselves is, is human nature. We are imperfect beings. So again, this is a step in that kindness in itself is being able to say, you know, I'm not perfect. I know I'm not perfect, but I try every damn day. Okay, so that's ingredient one is kindness. Ingredient number two is going to be common humanity. Common what humanity. the heck is that? So Dr. Krista Neff, who is an expert on self-compassion and self-compassion research, she says compassion literally means to suffer with, which implies a basic mutuality in the experience of suffering. When we are suffering together, the emotion self-compassion brings to the table is the recognition that the human experience is imperfect. We all make mistakes and our feelings are universal. We are not alone. Yeah. This is the difference between self-pity and self-compassion. Self-pity says, oh, poor me, I'm all alone. I'm the, only, I'm the only one experiencing this negative self-talk. I'm the only one going through this act in life. Where self-compassion says, no. Everybody feels it. Everybody experiences it. Maybe not on the same level. Maybe it's... You know, everybody experiences it different. Maybe somebody gets hit a lot harder with something that that is out of their control, right? The, but pain, the, the, the pain is the same. Pain's the same. Right? We're all suffering together, right? If the pain that you're feeling in difficult times or on bad days is the same pain that I feel in difficult times and had bad days. And like Mike said, it's the triggers, it's the circumstances, and it's the de degree of pain that is different. But the common here is that we all suffer. The human experience, we suffer. Well, we, Kayla and I were having a good talk about this last night in our hot tub. It's, you know, there, there is that, the, in the human journey, we are all going to suffer at some point. It, it depends, the severity, the circumstances, all that's going to be different for everybody, but everybody at some point in their life is going to suffer. So when you have somebody that's important to you in your life and they are suffering, reach out to them. Be that support for them. Be the person that they know they can rely on because that type of a person is invaluable the best you can anyways ingredient number three 
Ingredient number three is mind, fi, mindfulness and awareness without judgment. Ooh, that's the important part. Right? And mindfulness and awareness without judgment means that you are the observer looking in versus the storyteller on the inside, right? You, we tell ourselves the story. We have this negative self-talk. that It's constantly going on and on and on and on and on. But when we become the observer or the watcher, right? If you look at the power of now, right? He calls it the watcher. You're, you're, you are now observing the, the self-talk that you're having. You're more aware of it. When you become more aware of it is when you can actually begin to take action towards change. If we go through that, um, I'm going to say that unconscious awareness where we're not paying attention to it, how are we ever going to change it? Well, that's just drifting, right? So there, there's being active in your life. And, you know, there, there's people that are like, oh, well, I live the most extravagant life there is that they don't even experience this mindfulness where they don't take the time to sit back and have an objective view of their life and be like, okay, well, you know, this, this is how things are going, right? They, they're just in the moment all the time. Right. So when we look at our self-talk and we want to start changing the messaging that we're telling ourselves, and I, maybe I should take a step back here before I talk about how we're going to do it. It's like, okay, we have that negative self-critic and we all are like, oh, don't like that guy. Yeah. Like, constantly putting me down, but I want you to know that that self-critic is imperative to your survival. It is there for your basic survival and it will never go away. If you didn't have that inner critic and you were walking down a dark alley and there was scary things all around you, there'd be no inner, inner voice there. You'd just continue walking and be like, hey, yo, I'm totally safe as the guy's <laughs> pointing a gun at you and you're like, yeah, I better. <laughs> right. So we've got this inner critic for our basic survival. But it's up to us to decide whether we're going to feed the inner critic or if we're going to begin to feed the more positive, uplifting version of ourselves, right? And often we we have this tendency to go towards the negative. It's just, it's basic survival. It's human nature. We, right? we would like to be uncomfortable, but still alive. Like, I know I can survive as long as I berate myself because it's uncomfortable, but I also know that every day when I make myself uncomfortable, I'm constantly going to survive that day. That's basic survival. I'll make it through the day. That's okay. Haven't died yet. But what if I started to change and love myself? Like, would I make it through the day? I don't know. Our minds don't like change is what Kayla is alluding to. The fact that if you've been telling yourself that you're 10 pounds overweight and you hate the way your hips look or your ankles look or whatever it is, but if you've been telling yourself this every day, your mind knows that it is safe saying those things. But your mind doesn't know if you start saying, hey, you have a beautiful smile today. Your, your hair looks great. You know, ooh, did a great job on the eyebrows this morning. Whatever it is, your mind hasn't told yourself this before, so it doesn't know that it's going to survive. In your mind's eye, if you say that you look good, you might die today. It's, it's changed. It's something new. Right. And when it comes to this, the self-talk and when it comes to the familiar patterning in your brain, your brain likes that familiarity and it looks for that familiarity in the world around you and in others, right? So you're going to start to surround yourself with others that do something very similar yeah. with others that you see that commonality and because your brain knows it can survive it and your brain locks it in as familiar. It's comfortable. We like comfortable, right? Nobody wants to be uncomfortable. And if you're going to change, you're going to become uncomfortable, right? Um, and so we need to begin to step into that uncomfortable zone, that unfamiliar zone of that, maybe that positive loop to really begin to create that change in how we feel, right? Or if we change to more positive self-talk, we're going to feel better about ourselves. We're going to have more confidence within ourselves. We're going to love ourselves more. Confidence is my favorite thing you just said there. Confidence is one of those things. It's, it's, it's a muscle. If you don't use it, you'll never have it. So being able to build confidence starts with self-compassion starts with loving yourself if you truly don't love yourself the fact that you you know you might have this i'm going to use the term male bravado um lots of the less confident people you know put on a facade that they are confident almost an over they're overcompensating for the fact that they're not actually that confident they kind of put this front on that they have all of this confidence but at the very base of it there's no self-love there's no there's no depth to that confidence. Yeah, there's no self-compassion coming from it. 
So going back to now, how do we begin to step into this different version? How do we begin to change the self-talk to begin to feed the positive, uplifting wolf inside of us? If you go back to, what was it, like episode one, we talked about the wolf that you feed, right? So it, how do we begin to, to really feed that? And that's through self-awareness and self-compassion. And a self-awareness really resides within self-compassion. So if we're looking at that self-compassion, you know, be a little kinder to yourself. Give yourself a compliment, anything. What, what kind of a nice compliment could you say? Like, geez, we're all like the color of your socks today. You know, you did awesome today. Yeah, you really paid attention to what you were eating. Good job getting out on that walk. You know, that's it, kindness. It doesn't have to be anything big. Exactly, no. right? Just try, try it. Try it on. You found your breath today. Did you notice that you sat there and just breathed for two minutes? That was amazing. Yeah. That was more than you did yesterday. Right? And then when we look at it when it when we come into that common humanity, it's like on your bad days, you're not alone. You know that you can pick up the phone, you can call a family member, a friend, a loved one, you can read a book. Well, and I think a big thing with the common humanity and with that, you know, on the bad days, we'll call them, is realizing that a bad day is not forever going to be a bad day, right? Just because you have one off day, like we, we all have these catastrophic things that happen in our lives. If you have a loved one that you lose, if you have a sudden loss of a job, whatever it might be, you can have a bad day, but that's not going to define you for the rest of your life. You do not become the emotion of this is, this is bad. I am bad. You can't live in this self pity, this, this nobody else has been through this. Other people have been through it and are going to get through it as well. It's, it's the work to get through it. And again, like Caleb was saying, it's, it's reaching out to a friend and saying, Hey, I had some shit happen. I'm having a rough time here. And again, you're going to have that support network. Everybody has somebody that is their support network. Whether you think you do or you don't, on your worst days, somebody that you know and love is going to listen and is going to be there for you. And if you don't have a support network, call you call me. 100%. Don't call me. Kayla needs friends. No, <laughs> but, but the reality is, we, we preach this, but we also practice it. If you don't have somebody to talk to and you're having a terrible day, give me a shout. I say this to like all my young guys, like hockey players I work with, I'm like, you have a shitty game, you have a terrible day. Give me a shout. I can talk to you. I've been through some stuff. Yeah. I promise. Send us a social media message, whatever. Like, don't know how to get in contact with us. Do it through there. Like, we are here for your support. And we want to see you feeling supported in this in this common humanity way, in this, this, this self-compassion, this caring way. And then the third one, again, is back to that mindfulness. So, again, being mindful of your thoughts, being mindful of your scenario, right? If you without judgment. Yeah, without judgment. That's the hard part. You mindfulness is easy when it's just said, right? Oh yeah, I'm mindful. I'm, I meditate, I'm mindful. I'm breathing, I'm mindful. Right? But the crazy thing is most people when they think of mindfulness, they just think like they're they're observing their thoughts. But then when they actually start to be in there, I kind of say it in the empty space between your ears, and you're in there thinking of these things, a lot of people judge their thoughts as they go. So it's like, oh, I can't relax today. Oh, mm, I can't just sit here for five minutes and breathe. Why am I breathing? This is so stupid. Mm. And it's it's that constant again. You're 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 or, being mindful, but you're not. You're you're judging the hell out of it. Well, and like one scenario that I'll use is like it, when I was really first getting into that mindfulness, and I was doing yoga, and they're like, breathe and be mindful, and just become aware of your thoughts, but don't pay too much attention to them. And I was sitting there, and I was planning out what I was going to have for dinner. And I was like, oh, why are you planning out what you're going to have for dinner? Like, you shouldn't be doing this. And then I was like, yeah, forget about it. Okay, let that one go. And then I was, another thought would the come stakes. in. <laughs> and then and it was like, the next thing I would do is like berate myself for thinking that because I noticed that I was thinking about it. But it's like, no, just notice it. Notice that you were thinking about it. Let it and go. let it go. Because we all have such a hard time letting that shit go. <laughs> like we really do like let go of the things that were you can't change the past yeah. you can change the present and you can change the future by your actions yeah. planning is one thing taking action on those plans is a completely different animal so bringing this self-compassion into your self-talk looks like giving yourself a compliment looks like 
being less hard on yourself. Just know that, you know, everybody else is suffering too. Maybe it's being less judgmental towards other people. Maybe, yeah. maybe you have the, the problem where you go through your social media feed, which is a terrible thing to be doing all the time anyways, but you're going through and you're like, she looks like garbage today. Whatever. Or you're judging yourself against those people where, God, I wish I looked like that person. I wish I did what that person does. Yeah, practice the kindness again. Come back to that place of kindness and come back to that place of action, right? So that mindfulness is like be aware of your movement, be aware of your behaviors, be aware of the voice in your head without judgment and let it go and start to be, bring more attention, be more mindful of what you do want to fuel yourself with, the messaging you want to fuel yourself with. You don't like the way you look, get up and take action on changing that. This is one of my favorite things that I get to talk with about my clients. Some We, we have weight loss clients that come in and they, they've started this journey. And when we're working out and they're looking in the mirror, they're like, oh God, I hate looking at myself in the mirror. And I'm like, you don't get to judge yourself like that. You are here right now making a difference from what you're seeing in that mirror today. You are already starting the journey. It's one thing if you're sitting at home on your couch eating a bag of chips and you're not doing anything about it. You're saying you want to do something about it. But you are here right now changing your life. And you're going to sit here and judge the, the person that you see in that mirror right now. I don't accept that. Well, and that is looking for that external validation. And, I, and I'll answer that with get rid of the mirror. You know, begin to love that person without the mirror first and foremost, because that person that you're living with every single day is you and you alone are the person that you need to love. If you hate the person that you have to live with every waking moment in this lifetime, then you need to do a critical self check here, a critical self check and go, Hey, how can I begin to like and enjoy this person? Because you are with you every hour of every day of every moment of your life. So if you don't love yourself, change yourself. Change into somebody that you do love. Because without that work, you're, you're going to be living an entirety of your life without the joy that comes with being able to love other people fully too. Because if you never fully love yourself, you're never going to fully love another person because it's not you saying don't know that, what you're giving them yeah it's not saying that you'll never love another person but if you don't have that depth for yourself you'll never whatever you have for yourself is the highest depth that you're going to have for somebody else it's true well and I, I, the other part of that though is like if you say that you love somebody truly but you don't love yourself how do you know how much of yourself that you can love them with yeah because yeah. that comes with awareness right that comes with that awareness of yourself and who you are defining that person, yeah. you know, change that definition, begin to accept and love this version of yourself. And then you can really begin to accept and love the world around you. Start from in the inside, light that fire, light that candle inside of you, and then let that light shine out. Stop looking for the match to light it from the outside. It's not out there. It's inside. 100%. I think we'll leave this on our this episode then. This was amazing. Holy man, we're gonna have a short episode. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys loved this episode or you found value in some of the information that we've given you here today, please reach out, give us a comment, share it on your social media, share it with a friend or family member. That's really how we grow this podcast is through your likes and shares and follows. And we'll leave you guys today. Thank you so much for listening. Awesome. Thank you so much.